I was, uh, I was probably 12 when I first started developing an interest in magic, and one of the things that uh, I did like most kids do, and I suppose even today I still do to a degree, is I would uh, scrounge for change. I'd look for change over the couch, or I'd do odd jobs, or mow lawns to be able to raise money to be able to buy whatever the newest trick was. And unlike now, we didn't have that option for instant gratification that you do on the internet. You know, you couldn't get online and watch a video. In fact, the only videos that existed back then were VHS, and they were extremely expensive and very, very rare and hard to find. Um, I had a local magic shop, but they didn't carry all the latest products. And I used to go down there and, you know, work my way through the, uh, the crack-infested area of the town and try not to get shot, you know, wearing my bulletproof Kevlar vest and carrying a Glock. No, I'm just kidding. I was 12. But, uh, you know, I, a lot of the shops that you find have unfortunately been relegated to some of the more seedy areas of town. And, you know, you just don't get the kind of shops like Davenport's, for example, or Abbott's like you did back in the, in the day. But there is a shop that I've been a, a real fan of. And uh, back when I was 12, 13, 14, I used to get their catalog all the time. And uh, I loved getting it. I loved reading the descriptions and trying to imagine in my head how that trick would uh, work, you know, what I'd have to do to be able to make something like that happen, whatever the description was. And that's Joe Stevens Magic Emporium. You know, Stevens Magic Emporium in Kansas. I've been a big fan, uh, definitely uh, admire him and respect him. He's contributed uh, an enormous amount to our community certainly uh, uh, here in the United States and abroad, had a major influence in magic, uh, certainly runs the shop with integrity, and I really appreciate that. And of course, uh, I called Mark, uh, his son, who also is one of the main uh, uh, proprietors of the shop, if you will, and uh, called him up and said, hey, listen, I got a new product I'd like to share with you if you're interested, and uh, he was. I sent him a copy, and he was very pleased with it. I'm glad to, glad to hear. I try to, uh, try to impress when I make products like this. I try to make something that is solid and well produced and looks good. Uh, I don't always hit my mark, but uh, with book test, I seem to, to be getting better and better as every year passes by. And this one in particular is the Edgar Allan Poe book test. It's, uh, it's truly um, one of my more favorites now. Uh, it seems like every time I make a new one, it's my new favorite, but, but I'm happy with the cover. I'm happy with the look. Uh, this cover in particular, you'll notice this background. There's a raven up in here. Um, it comes from the original Edgar Allan Poe when he first published his essays. Uh, really, really happy with the look. Uh, I like the red and the contrast. Uh, deliberately put his picture on the back so you can see the author himself. And uh, Poe was definitely one of my favorite authors in classic literature. The, uh, the master of the macabre and certainly one of the, uh, the forefathers of the detective novel genre. Uh, pop, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize the more popular novels like Sherlock actually uh, were subsequent to Edgar Allan Poe's work. So if you like the macabre and you like detective novels and you enjoy some of his essays, like I, I certainly do, The Raven, this is a great book. It's a great opportunity for you to be able to have something that you can not only read from front to back and to have the author's original intent and context, but also it's something that you can leave with your audience. You can hand it out, allow them to examine it before and after the show. You can actually repeat the effect over and over again to your heart's desire. It's, uh, it's pretty remarkable, actually. Um, you know, these, these have really grown and become better and better with every new development, with every new book. Uh, the layout, the paper weight, uh, the quality of the paper and the cover, the color combinations, just the, the binding everything. Uh, the real ISBN, uh, this, this ISBN, in fact, if you search this online, for example, at Amazon, it's going to come up as the Edgar Allan Poe. Um, the complete tales and poems with selected essays. It will not say anything about a book test. I've deliberately made it so it's as real as it possibly could be. Uh, the ISBN is legitimate. The, um, the Library of Congress catalog and publication data, the uh, LCC, it's PR6037. You could search that right now at, uh, at the Library of Congress and this book is going to pop up as being legitimate. And I don't know what else I could do really to make it more of a real book. So. Uh, I'm really happy with it, like I said. Now, there is one improvement I've made that I think that you'll um, appreciate, especially if you've got my book tests already in your collection. Uh, this is a flashback book based on uh, Larry Becker's work, and there's, of course, predecessors before that. Uh, during a conversation with a, a friend of mine out in Washington, D.C., uh, he's in the Virginia area, actually, he suggested that I might consider putting the keyword second in. So I did that, and uh, it's come out really nice. Not only when you, you do the flashback and you get them to stop and look, and you look over here to glimpse your key, not only is it closer, 
Um, but it hides the word. It hides the key from prying eyes, if you will. Uh, some of the other books I have have the key on the far right-hand corner, which I don't have a problem with. I don't think that it negates or takes away or detracts in any way from the capability of the book. But uh, having it a second word in, I think, is something I'm going to do a lot more of. I, I just I like it. It's, a, it's pretty ingenious. It's a nice little subtlety that helps uh, hide the gimmick or gaff. And uh, I think it, it adds to the overall quality of the product itself. So if you like Edgar Allan Poe and you like book tests that are extremely easy to do, right outside the box with very little practice, I think you'll find that this one is going to meet or certainly, uh, certainly meet, but hopefully exceed your expectations of a product. It's affordable. It falls uh, well into a category of, uh, of book tests that you can buy several of and put on your shelf. It's not... Um, it's not designed to keep out of the hands of the curious, like is often said. Uh, I think that that is a largely a misnomer, uh, and I think it's an excuse uh, quite often to uh, inflate costs when they're not necessary. I think this is a really good price point. I, I think it's well affordable for anybody who's interested in it, and uh, like I said, I think you'll be really happy with it. So uh, many thanks to, uh, to Joe and Mark Stevens at Stevens Magic Emporium. Uh, please do support them. I love supporting local brick and mortars, and they're definitely, they're definitely a company that I respect and admire. And I hope that you will uh, purchase it from them. And you can always, of course, pick it up from me if uh, for some reason uh, they don't have it in stock. But uh, let's do our best to keep them uh, running out of stock and uh, getting more in. So thank you so much. I appreciate you listening to uh, my information here that I've shared with, uh, with you about Edgar Allan Poe. And if there's anything I can do for you, by all means, please don't hesitate to ask.